coming off of yesterday, you're in a stretch of you know just one home game in the seven week period. You've lost the first three games on the road. What has to change to uh, or improve to, to 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 get a win away from home? Well, all the things that uh, that are necessary uh, that that we we believe in and that we know that we have to do, which is you know play better defense, you know create some turnovers, create shorter fields for our offense and. You know, when we get down in the red zone, making sure that uh, that we're, we're turning those opportunities into touchdowns and you know, weren't able to do the, those things yesterday. How frustrating is that? I mean, red zone area has been something that this offense has been fairly good at the last, in recent seasons. Yeah, well, whatever we've done in the past or uh, did last week or, you know, two weeks ago, that's that that doesn't have a whole lot of bearing on, on – you know, future opportunities. So what we'll have to do is is improve there and understand, you know, maybe where things went wrong. We missed a play um, to hop that we felt good about and just missed them. Like that happens. Um, you know, first and 20 is, is tough and that got us off schedule and then, you know, we didn't convert there at the end. Are you taking enough shots at hop in the red zone? Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes I think the, the coverage dictates that and, you know, we'll we'll continue to look at that and and see if um, you know those things can can help us. But we we certainly want to get him involved and and need him at all parts of the field. Some of your suspicions, I guess, about what went wrong in run defense confirmed by watching tape. Yeah, I mean, they 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 blocked us. You know, I mean, they, they blocked us, and you know, we we got out of gaps. And you know, when you play peekaboo, uh, that that those things happen. When they are blocking you like that, what what have you got to do from a defensive standpoint? I guess from a player standpoint to keep that from happening. Keep them from blocking you. Yeah, yeah. put your hands in their chest and you know leverage your gap. When the ball runs through your gap, shed and tackle and swarm to the football. You know, so all the things that we've tried to do around here for for a while. Um, you know, sometimes you know, and again they 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 broke one and. You know, KB was down there playing the quarterback, you know, on a run and, you know, wasn't it, you know, he's been able to, and that that's not on KB, that's just telling you where he was. Like, he was over there in case the quarterback pulled it and, you know, he's been really good for us when he's in the middle of the field that when that ball breaks like that, that we can, you know, he can, he most usually likely gets him on the ground. He just, he was over there playing the quarterback zone read game like we, you know, had told him to. Five weeks in, how are you feeling about how Chig has developed in year two so far? Uh, yeah, I think he's just inconsistent, and, you know, some of that's, you know, our, our ability to try to find ways to get him the ball, you know, within what we're trying to do. But, you know, some of that's on, on Chig as well. So I, I, I love his effort. I, I love some of the, the things that he's doing. Um, but I think there's some details and some things that he can, you know, be better at as well. You and Christian yesterday were both kind of talking about squaring up in the past game. Just for our clarity, what do you guys look for when it comes to squaring up? What, what well, no, we're just talking about playing square and not letting these guys run, whether that's, you know, within five yards or within ten yards. Um, you know, I'm going to say the th same thing to, to, to Imani Hooker. You know, I mean, you have leverage on every um, pass coverage, or man or zone, and, you know, leverage may mean inside eye, outside eye, but – not not turning and letting them run, and um, you know if you're if you're square and they run into you, you know, you probably get the benefit of the doubt. Uh, not if you you slide in in front of them, and or you know catch them with your arm, and so I think that's just the the focal point, and that that's not you know trying to let anybody off the hook. It just trying to talk to the league and the officials and the things that they look for. And, um, you know, when, when you are able to, to play square uh, and, and move your feet, you know, sometimes you, you know, you get the benefit of the doubt. Some of the things that happen, like maybe eyes in the backfield, sitting on the sticks, are those things that are easily correctable? Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. They better be correctable uh, quickly. Um, would hope that we wouldn't be having these conversations about 
putting our eyes in the backfield and, you know, grabbing guys down the field and when we're in phase. I think those are just things that we have to be able to, you know, understand you're in phase. There's no reason to, to grab a guy. and it's in. When you have a guy like that that has ability but you're not getting the results, like how do you go about managing them and getting to coach to those results? Well, I mean, I think at some point in time, this is professional sports. And we're, we're going to coach them, coach every single one of them, Christian included. Uh, but we also have a job to do, and, and we have to – to go out and do it, and one week doesn't mean anything, and one game doesn't mean you know. I mean, it's unfortunate, but then we have to we have to keep moving on, and we have to we have to improve and figure out um, you know is it that we're trying to make some plays? And I mean, if you're in match coverage, really, I, the whole goal is that we don't let our man catch the ball, not that we're we're trying to make interceptions in match coverage, because then you start looking for the football, you start looking in the backfield, and then you know they uncover or they make another move. So. You know, there's opportunities when we can try to get an interception and, and in man coverage, that's not one of them. What's your comfort level with the young guys that are behind them, though? I mean, you feel comfortable if you have to throw them out there? They can sure. Play well I mean, I, yeah, that's why everybody's here. You know, and that, that's something that could happen. And, you know, we'll see where, where things go here at the rest of the day in our meetings and, you know, as we, we work towards Baltimore. An example of maybe a guy trying to be a little too eager to try to make a turnover. You talk so much about it. Is it just not happening, or are there other things that defensively you're not doing to put you in the right position to make it happen? Well, you could tip a ball at the line of scrimmage. You know what I mean? How many we don't we don't tip any passes that then get intercepted. Talk about tip balls getting getting intercepted, so we don't we don't tip any at the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, we don't hammer any footballs out, and we never the ball was never in jeopardy uh, yesterday. And quarterbacks are usually the the number one target, and when you hit the quarterback two times, it's it's hard to think that you're going to get the football out when you can only hit him twice. Was yesterday a step forward in pass protection for you? Yeah, guys? I think so. I mean, I thought you know the pass game was um, you know efficient. Um, you know, would have liked to you know been a, been better in the red zone when we threw it, but you know we hit some chunks, we hit some play passes. I thought there were some good things there. Um, certainly, there were some good pockets, and you know, quarterback got hit a couple of times. But I felt like we had time to just you know work our way through and progress through the the route and gave him some time to get the ball downfield. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I think a little rusty, but you know, maybe a little conditioning. But I think excited about you know getting him back in there and having him another week and. You know, it was a good step for him to, to get back out there and, you know, be able to to, to play through the entire game. Nicholas, one of the guys that was inactive, it, just the feeling that on him going into the week, he just need, needs more time um, to get his technique and conditioning everything back. Yeah, I mean, he's, Nick's been out a while, so Nick will have to earn a, earn a spot back onto the, the, the offensive line and, and what we're trying to do, so he – had a little bit of practice last week, and he'll get more this week. Star Wars agents tweeted that uh, he's joining the practice squad. He's a veteran guy. What uh, what does he bring to the defensive line? I don't even know if we've he signed the papers or not. So until I get confirmation of that, I'm sure his agent. You can check with him on Twitter, but I'll let you know soon. I don't want to say something miss miss misspeak. You know when I in the process of me coming up here. Tajay Spears progressed as an offensive weapon this year. Uh, you know, good. We got to continue to find ways to get him the ball. Um, his, my favorite contributions that he makes. I know that he's going to do good things with the football. But even on the 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 pass to Wesco there on short yardage, he's sprinting down there to to block somebody that's trying to hit, you know, Trayvon and. He tries to protect the guy with the ball. Um, didn't really mention it, I don't think, during the week in Cincinnati. But you know, the 15-yard penalty that everybody was questioning was Tajay coming over and blocking a guy and squaring him up in the hole and then driving him as the pass went. And the guy ripped Tajay's helmet off. And that's what they ended up calling it. So 
it, you know, I think there was some questions on, was it on the quarterback? Was it on Nick? It was actually Tajay's willingness to go in there and block the guy and finish as long as he could that the guy got frustrated and ripped his helmet off. So those are the things that, again, we talked about in Minnesota when he came in and blocked in the pressure and the mug look. And so those are all really, really positive things outside of what he does with the football in his hand, which, you know, speaks for itself. With DeAndre Hopkins, uh, that drive coming out of the uh, halftime, you know, it kind of took over that drive. How do you like the way he's just kind of getting settled in as, as one of the major guys in the offense? Well, he, he has to be, and he knows that, and, and the connection that he has with the quarterback and his ability to find seams in the defense and whether it's to settle down or uncover, uh, run through his own, Ryan gave him a good ball, or his ability to adjust to, to a pass, his body control. So, you know, I, I know up until yesterday, he, I, he had obviously would have wanted more production, but I've mentioned before, every time we've needed a, a play on third down, he's been there, uh, or a play at the end of the Chargers game, you know, made a huge play. So yesterday, it was great to see him, you know, have, have some, you know, production. Explosive plays that you've done defensively, but offensively, you've had a bunch of 15, 16 play drives. Do you need a few more explosives to make you not have to drive 80 yards in 17 plays? I mean, unless you score from the 50 yard line, you're going to have to be good in the red zone. So I'm at, I'm, I don't, we'll take as many as we can get. Just, I mean, I think we're, we're trying to get them. I mean, Maybe we could have thrown a crit. You know, I mean, I think Ryan could have probably let one go to Chris Moore there uh, around the maybe it was the 35 or something uh, going in. But other than that, I don't know where we would have, you know, gotten any more of them. What kind of factors went into maybe your break a couple of runs, but that was few and far between. What kind of factors went into your decision to? practice here for most of the week rather than go over to London for the entire time? Uh, our experience, I think, the last time that we went over is get a lot of work in here. Uh, have everything that we need here at the facility. Um, work ahead, make Tuesday a Wednesday, a Wednesday a Thursday, Friday, you know, th and so on and so forth. Get over there. Um, Get it, get adjusted. Have a Friday practice. Clean up a lot of the stuff that we did, um, and then have our normal preparation for the game. I, you know, I've talked to a lot of people that have done it both ways, and that's how we did it the last time. Felt like we were ready to go, and um, you know, just didn't just didn't end the way that we wanted to. Were there any things from that last time you were there that you said, okay, you know what? Next time we're going to do differently, and you're doing differently this time. We're we're going to get the two point conversion. That's what we're going to do. But as far as like operations, why? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I, I I felt like it was good. I felt like the hospitality was good. I, you know, I mean, we provided buses and security and things for the players so that they could go into the city and see what they wanted to see. That worked out well. Guys left, went down there early. Got back early, got sleep. Um, you know, we, we do a little light workout, stretch, and take a walk and do some stuff before our Friday meetings. Um, you know, other than that, I don't know what, you know, we'll have all our staff over there, our training staff and medical staff for, for the players. No, we're not. We're at, we're at a different place. The, no Duke Castle. So, you have to tell the players preparation wise to keep their bodies right for all the travel, or is that something that you kind of expect? No, we we do. I mean, we're trying to you know you can dial back a little bit on the sleep and 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 make sure that that we're hydrated and limited on the caffeine and um, all those things that that are going to be critical when we when we go and travel. So hopefully we can you know start to try to you know get a little bit of extra sleep or you know make sure that we're going to bed a little bit earlier. So some of the Bills players, they, you know, had complained about the, the playing surface. They said it was a route for some of their injuries. Have you guys, like, done research and looked into that surface? And we have. Yeah, and we've spoken to both teams and both um, equipment managers and, you know, 
well, however the field is, I'm sure it's sure it's safe and sure it's rated. That that's their opinion. I haven't played on it. I won't play on it. But um, you know, we'll we'll have to be prepared for for whatever the surface is. After a frustrating game that nobody's happy with, is there a level of accountability you want to see from your players after a game? And what does that accountability look like to you? That you, when you see guys, how they interact, how they talk, how they reflect on their own performance. Yeah, I mean, I think it's accountability is critical. Accountability and discipline, um, not making excuses, showing up. And we know it's a long season, and uh, game is humbling. Sometimes, you know, you you put a lot into it. Sometimes you lose, unfortunately. Um, but you know, come back to work. Get get back to work and. Uh, prepare and to to go play a, a, a good football team, a disciplined, physical football team uh, that's really good in the red zone on both sides of the ball. They run it, they stop the run. Um, so we we know what we're we're getting ready for. A lot of respect for them, and uh, we just have to come to work and uh, you know start preparing as as much as it. Disappointing. Like we we got to move on, and I try to give myself till nine o'clock to to quit pouting, and, and it's time to go to work. You didn't put Traylon on IR. Does he have a shot this week? Uh, we'll see. I, I mean, I uh, I know he's working hard, and that we'll see how he does. And you know, tomorrow we'll tomorrow and you know, Wednesday, and, and we'll, we'll see how he does. But you know, hopeful that that he can uh, try to get out and start running around. Do you think he's got a shot this week? I hope so. But it's early in the week. I don't know. You got 12 games left, obviously, but this is one before the bye week. Is there any special message to the guys about getting this one or kind of getting back to 500 before you go? Uh, I hope we get try to get every one we play. I mean, it, that's the message is let's try to win every one we play. Like, just it's a it's a week to week uh, league and uh, focus on this week and everything that we can do and then you know figure out where we go after that